Back in late 2019, I did what no man dared to do. I made a character analysis on the main female protagonist in Fruits Basket, Toru Honda. Now, that isn't that impressive or bold when you assume that I've read the manga, but I was actually just a little old anime only, diving into her character only a third of the way through the story. I did this insane act because I was blown away by how deep her character arc already was, and somehow I didn't fall flat on my face and people actually wanted more. Well, here I am, with a look at another one of the stars of the show, Yuki Soma, and hopefully the streak is going to continue. At face value, you're going to view Yuki as the perfect ladies' man. His charming looks and sophisticated words would make anyone melt, and be envy of his lifestyle. But deep down, he is a victim of abuse and neglect, tormented by his past, present, and unfortunately, even his future. Abuse is a very touchy subject to convey, as usually when authors attempt to do so, it feels as if it's mockery of what people actually go through, to which I personally believe the culprit is a lack of experience with the themes, not necessarily malicious intent. It might feel hollow as if the motions are there, but the soul is lacking, as if they're just trying to connect with the viewers for brownie points, not actually trying to tell something meaningful. But in those rare cases, you get something that screams pain, empathy, and compassion. For those with troubled pasts, horrifying presents, or disappointing futures, where the blame game is nowhere to be found. I'm lucky to admit, my life isn't anywhere close to what these characters in this anime deal with, but I have plenty of people in my life who have experienced horrors that make my blood boil. So to be able to see characters in similar situations as them, and done so in a respectable way that never glorifies these struggles, it brings a tear to my eye and once again shows why Fruits Basket is what other authors should aim to write. It's easy to portray abuse as weak person becomes strong and bad person who hurts them gets punished, but that's exactly how you fall victim to tropes in shallow writing. Yuki's character arc is all about finding your strength and giving up on the blame game while embracing what you cherish most. When you look at his childhood, your gut reaction is burn his mother, blow up Akito, and give him a million dollars while you're at it. But what would that actually do for his character? Nothing. Which that statement might want to make you upset, but at least hear me out. Fruits Basket isn't afraid to show you the dark and gritty. This is a man that, since he was a young child, was tossed away by his mother for popularity at the end of the day. Her son is handpicked by the head of the family, look at where I can go, with this gift. When her son comes crying to her, she'll hit him or yell at him as he wonders what's going to happen when no one else is around and all he's left with is Akito. She's words I'd love to use if I wasn't afraid of demonetization. Then you have Akito, who treats Yuki like trash, makes sure he understands he's worthless without the head of the family. This room is all you're gonna know. You're sick. Your body can't survive without me. Imagine having your childhood be physical and emotional abuse as your body is weak and frail and you wonder if giving up and dying might actually be the happiest day of your life. So why is it that I don't wish for either one of these characters to be dead or for bad things to happen to them? Because Yuki takes the higher ground in one of the best ways I've ever seen in the anime medium. And you gotta hear me out here. Higher ground tropes are done to death, and more often than not, they suck, and I'll be the first one to admit that. But the thing is, Fruits Basket may have given Yuki an arc that could be summed down to a trope in a single sentence, but when you actually witness it, it's the farthest thing from it in actuality. It's brilliant and never a trope. The series starts off with the viewer assuming it would be a love triangle between Toru, Kyo, and Yuki, but over the first season, the groundwork is set and it's easy to notice that Yuki cares for Toru in a motherly way, but then the series will go and throw you curveballs that make him seem romantically interested in Toru. Most of the time, this is because authors can't make up their damn mind, but in the case of this anime, it's Yuki feeling ashamed of what he sees her as and feels as if he needs to man up and needs to view a girl that's around his age as a female love interest before quickly realizing that she is a mother to him and others and that's totally okay. The reason Yuki can embrace kindness and be the bigger person is because of his true mother in this series, Toru. She may be around the same age as him, but this girl has cared for him since the first day that she met him, and while she may be embarrassed by the prince from time to time, she's willing to die for him, which is the complete opposite of his biological mother, one who tosses him away without second thought. This dynamic is one of the most brilliant I've ever seen, and rather than Yuki's transition from cold, sad eyes, not happy with life, to one embracing it every single day, starts with a mother hurting him moves to a mother mending his heart, but then concludes on a man finding his own path in life full of friendship and love. Toru not being someone wishing harm on others but trying to save those around her as she selflessly tosses her own feelings away is huge motivation in character development for how Yuki interacts with others. How your raise shapes you, and with Yuki never really having true parental love or sibling relationships, Toru manages to catapult him into territory away from her but still viewable in the distance. 
Now his mother I assumed would get a pretty brutal wake up call, but what ended up happening was fairly tame for the story. This is someone who forced opinions down Yuki's throat. Sure he picked his high school, but to her, she always ran the show. When Yuki starts confronting her, not as a way to hurt her, but to progress down his own path in life, he refuses to back down more and more and you start seeing the curse break towards her, not in a literal sense, but more figuratively. She is a shitty mother and Toru will always be his true mother at the end of the day. But the way they so elegantly portray him not running away, chasing after her to make sure that she knows who he is. Not for her help, but just to show her that Yuki is here and he's no longer afraid. Rather than Yuki craving her motherly love, he is proving to himself that it's okay and that in return, that starts acting like a wake up call for her. Not so they can skip down the road holding hands together, forgetting about the past, but hopefully is going to shape her to be a better person in the future, while Yuki enjoys his life. We don't love her in these moments, but we really have no reason to hate her, especially with how Yuki's currently feeling. Yuki's brotherly dynamic is the farthest thing from a loving sibling relationship, and Yuki seems quite cold and blunt when it comes to Ayame, his older brother, who of which is the most flamboyant and loving brother in existence, or at least that's what face value would indicate. The great thing with Fruits Basket is nothing is ever what it appears to be. This loving brother actually used to be a very cold and isolated one who left Yuki to suffer alone, and both of their current ways of life are a mirror to that past, one trying to atone and another having a hard time forgiving, or at the very least, giving him another shot after he was abandoned once again in his greatest time of need. With Aime being so distant from Yuki at this pivotal point of his life, as he was often unaware he even had a brother and by the time he did it was far too late. The riff was there and there was no turning back. But when you have Toru's guiding hand bringing every Soma together despite wanting to run away or wanting to go in for a hug, you don't excuse those prior actions. But you start seeing things from another point of view. You recognize how he could be blindsided, and you see this overconfident, spazzy personality as someone ashamed of his past wants to make his present flawless. He does want to be forgiven. That's his biggest driving factor. He wants to stop blaming himself. And Yuki, as much as he hates to admit it, he wants a family. It'd be so easy to write this dynamic as, okay, he forgives him and Ayame stops trying, but goddamn does he live up to that Brother of the Year award that he decided to make for himself even before he got forgiven. Whenever there is someone hurting him, he is there. He refuses to let anyone hurt his dear Yuki, and truthfully, their repaired relationship is one of the best examples of forgiveness by not excusing actions from the past, but shaping the present so they can all be better people. And whether it's a mother, whether it's Akita, whether it's the world itself going against Yuki, he is there to be the best brother to continue to make sure Yuki never feels alone like he did in the past. By separating this man from the one that he was glued to at the start of the main story, you risk viewers pulling away. By introducing a new array of side characters for Yuki to befriend and even potentially fall in love with, you're saying he is going to be around them more than the loving relationship of Toru and the others. But by Toru teaching him that he's worth something, he understands that his place is actually somewhere else, whereas with someone such as Kyo, his place is clearly next to Toru, which is why he's always playing matchmaker so often. He cares for both of them, and unfortunately both are more dense than doorknobs when it comes to their true feelings, so he kind of has to make sure they stick together. The student council is something I assumed I would have despised, as nothing really about it pulled me in right away. But as you see relationships start to blossom, primarily with Kakuru and Machi, I truly wanted to give a standing ovation. Kyo and Yuki have very hostile attitudes towards the other, and when you see their childhood, it's easy to see why. The cat and the rat spirits already don't like each other to begin with, and when an outsider looking in sees Yuki as the favorite and Yuki sees Kyo as a potential friend, it's going to implode and things are going to continue to get rough. And it's easier to to blame the others then tackle the truth as time goes on and you feel like it's too late to make amends. But that's not to say they're not friends. Maybe not in the traditional sense, but the way the two have looked out for one another says Toru's influence has done a lot to mend their broken hearts and maybe one day they can truly look at each other as equals. But characters like Kakuru on the other hand start off on the most annoying note possible, but honestly end up on the best friend level I didn't think possible. Usually a story like this would keep the focus on the Kyo of the tale, so one would win the girl and the other would be their friend. But here you introduce the true bromance of the series that annoys Yuki beyond belief, but finally allows him to start embracing that connection that he's craved since he was a child. He's so used to those friends being ripped away from him, thinking the only one that he can trust is Akito, as that's exactly how he's been trained to believe. But with Toru's guiding hand, he's taking a risk. He's on the student council. He's building friends that he's not afraid of losing. All those annoying moments where Kakuru is insulting him, calling him a princess, goofing around, and just being an overall handful. Or hell, just giving honest advice that can be hard to swallow. It's him being a true friend. 
Casual jokes towards the other have always been a staple in my friendships and never intended to be malicious, and the questions that make you second guess yourself need to be said in order to confirm your own thought process from time to time. These two have one of the most intriguing relationships that's built around genuine friendship, and more authors should take note on how to handle such a subject, especially when the focus is on someone who's never known true companionship. If you've been taught that you don't deserve friends and if you go against the head of the family's back, their memories are going to be erased and you'll be punished, it should take a bit to develop these sorts of feelings. And the pacing the series takes Yuki's friendship arc is quite believable, especially when you consider Yuki's not the reason it happens in the first place. It's really all Cocker's personality forcing them together for better and for worse. But when it comes to Machi, she's honestly the best way to sum it down to is it's one of the more fascinating relationships in the entire Fruits Basket story. Not just for Yuki's character arc, the entire package. When you have someone as bruised as Yuki, how can you introduce someone currently more bruised than himself and take them in potentially romantic direction? But by establishing Yuki's growth with a the theme of acceptance being his front and center, it's quite easy to not treat Machi as a case to be fixed but as someone to get to know. Without even trying, he starts to help her see her own worth as up until that point she couldn't even answer questions about herself. But with how Toru helped Yuki recognizing who he is and what he wants to be in life, he's actually able to see things past that black and white look, view things like the student council as those to get to know. And Anyone with issues, he's willing to lend an ear to hear them out as he knows how much that means. From day one, I assumed she could be a love interest, but never did the anime say that's her role in the series. But rather, here's another character from a shitty situation, let's see what someone in a similar boat can do for her. She's the only character in this series not to view him as a prince, but see the sadness in his eyes, recognizing his growth, and that genuine feeling she has for him, not afraid to insult him or even call him out, is something Yuki has always needed. Something real. With all the people who have hurt him in his life, it'd be easy to play the blame game, and some deserve blame, don't get me wrong. But rather than holding on to that negativity, he's grown up and started to accept things and say, you know what, things may be bad at present times and damn were they bad in the past, but I'm here, I'm happy right now, and nothing and no one is going to take that from me. You can beat me, you can insult me, but I am above this game that Akito wants to play, and I forgive you. Akito is an infuriating character, one that makes my stomach churn and blood boil with rage. But when more and more characters are mirroring that kind of smile that Toru radiates, you start feeling the same way as them. You don't forgive what's happened with them, but you stop letting the trauma be their defining feature. When Yuki says he forgives the people that hurts him, while we are free to have our own opinions, what do we gain by foaming at the mouth and wishing harm towards them? If we stuck to a one note thought process of this is a shitty person and they are shitty, the story and our view on it will never grow. By becoming that bigger person, rather than bad person getting off with no punishment, we see those bad people embrace their mistakes slowly but surely. Not to become best friends, but for everyone to be better people. And this is a very difficult theme to nail, to show progress for bad people without excusing horrible actions. But honestly, Fruits Basket nails it every single time, and no matter how much I look at it, I still can't wrap my head around how Natsuki Takia managed to craft such a beautiful tale with such a great message. To write broken characters is quite easy, as having people feel dead inside is what every author does, and then they insert their saving grace. But Fruits Basket doesn't write broken characters. It writes bruised ones. Bruises will heal over time with enough love and care, but if you're broken, can you really come back as who you once were? Yuki Selma may be bruised, but he is far from broken, and like with Toru, hate isn't what heals, compassion does. The bad people in this show are bad in the past, but it doesn't mean they can't improve for their future, and those characters that they harmed don't need to forgive them in the way that they become best friends, but rather move past those horrible times. Video essays like these just pour out from my heart, which is why I adore making them so much. There's a ton to digest and appreciate about Yuki up until this point of the Fruits Basket anime, so I pass the torch over to you and ask what do you feel about this fascinating character? If you enjoyed my ramblings, please leave a like to help grow this video, and while you're at it, feel free to subscribe if you have anything new around here. If not, be sure to tell a friend, as that also means a lot as well. Until next time everyone, please take care, have a good one.